Alrighty. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Chas. I am the business startup coach helping you take your passions and your purpose and turn it into a profitable business. And um, today we are talking time management. And um, like I was rambling on before that um, it just seems like women are at higher risk for having these challenges with um, with time management than men do because we're such amazing humans. <laughs> and so anyway, I have Crystal online today. And um, yeah, so Crystal, tell me, tell us all about your business. Um, my business, I, it's uh, Crystal Inc. So it's a design business. I started as a graphic designer over 20 years ago. Um, I have a background of as a kinesiology degree with an opinion on how things should look and it sort of, sort of moved into marketing and design. So I focus more on branding, print material, um, I leave coding to coders. Um, I also love working with independent authors to help them design, publish their books and along the way running your own business. Um, I love Stephen Covey, that kind of thing. And then I started my own planners and created and produced their unique, you're not going to find them in Walmart, um, and a new system. So that works for me. So that's a bit where my business is at. Yeah, you do like tons of stuff. I just learned about the, the book publishing thing. That's very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm reading this book and it was like, go write, just go write. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should write a book. I don't know what I'm going to write a book about. Just write. Anyway. <laughs> Writing is a good skill to have, especially when you have a business. Yes, um, right? Yeah, I never was considered myself a writer, but when you do your marketing, your newsletters, that kind of thing, like you need to write and right? you get better and better and better as you just keep doing it. So, Totally. So what really made you start your business doing all these things? Uh, well, like I touched on, I had a kinesiology degree. I was w working in a downtown um, uh, fitness studio managing membership services, doing some marketing and the design, which is what I love doing. And then I had my first daughter and I had no desire to go back to that grind. Um, if people were stressed out about not enough towels, that really wasn't important to me anymore. So I just wanted more flexibility and control with my day to day life and being told what to do doesn't work for me. <laughs> right. I'm so with you. Like, yeah. <laughs> when so, I uh, laid off from my job last summer it was almost kind of a blessing because it, it was like I was teaching people how to start their businesses and like saying how amazing it is to be your own boss and yet here I am working <laughs> for somebody else so when that door closed it was like yay I made to like be my own boss well that's the thing you be your own boss you bust your ass and you get the benefits you can you just get that kind of feeling of accomplishment Mm -hmm. just by doing it for yourself. You don't need someone to give you permission to feel good about what it is that you do in a day. Um, and then other parts of my business, like I just love being creative. Um, I mean, being paid to do that is kind of like, really? Yeah. But like I design by puzzling all, I love designing all elements, copy, photography, illustrations, visuals that just engage me. Mm -hmm. um, and everything that I do, I focus on readability and making things professional. Um, because the shorter our attention spans are, the more important those visuals actually are. Mm -hmm. If you look like the guy, other guy, you're not standing out. So right. that's sort of what I kind of try to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. This is totally not part of the questions I sent you, but, okay. um, uh, <laughs> sorry, man. But what do you do when you like hit like a creative block or you're just kind of like stuck? What do you do? Um, you ever go cold? <laughs> sorry. You ever get like the writer's creative blocks? Yeah, I do. I mean, creativity is like a muse. Like my one of my favorite TED talks is um, what's her face from Eat, Pray, Love. Oh, Liz. Elizabeth, Liz, Liz Gilbert. And she did one on creativity and she talked about the creative muse and it sort of comes and if you grab onto it, great. If you don't, it leaves, right? So sometimes you just, if you're, whatever is kind of going on, there's something going on that's blocking you. You're just not in the right mindset. So I find like in the shower, go for a walk when I'm driving, doing errands and I'm just not distracted by other things, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, all of those types of things that actually opens up the window and then the creative ideas just start to flow in. So yeah. that's sort of how I work it. Um, I need to just step away 
yeah. personally, or the other answer is a deadline is awesome. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. to do something by tomorrow, focus and just push aside the rest of the world and just dig in deep. Um, and you really, cause a lot of the, sometimes the hard part is understanding there's so many crappy ideas, mm-hmm. but you have to get through all the crappy ideas to finally get to the good ideas. Right. Um, it's like digging through them. So totally. Hey, yeah, yeah. I like working by deadlines too. Like it just puts that little extra fire under your butt to, um, <laughs> to do stuff. Right. And to get yeah. it right. Um, so, okay. So Lindsay, oh, this worked. What the heck? I don't know why it took us so long to get on. And now Lindsay is able to join us. So, Hey, Lindsay. Hi, hey, Lindsay. Hey. We're just oh, doing like you. intros. So Crystal just told us what her business is and why she started. So, um, tell us who you are. I know you live in Edmonton. That's probably both. <laughs> <laughs> and we both live in Calgary. And okay. So tell us about your business and um, put away the stress of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jess. Well, first and foremost, my apologies. I had an emergency conference call is 11, which just ended now. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, can we just wrap up? Well, I need this to is be- <laughs> really interesting because it's all about like, how do us women man- manage our time? Right? <laughs> Absolutely, like absolutely. Happened, well, <laughs> right? so. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So my name is Lindsay Machona Mainzanis, and I just um, I use a double vowel <laughs> last name, my last mm-hmm. name and my husband's last name. I just feel like that is who I am. That is my identity. So so yeah. I didn't drop my <laughs> I didn't drop my last name. Yeah. And and forgive me, I have uh, I've had a cold for uh, the last few weeks. Oh, which is why I've been like staying indoors and self-isolating. It's, it's yeah. just a normal common cold. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I am a career and mindset coach. Okay. And I, I work with um, mainly women clients who are ambitious and who feel stuck in their careers. Like they, they feel and know that they're meant for more, but something's just holding them back and, and they're not sure what that is. Mm-hmm. They know they want to go to the next level, but they don't have the clarity about how to get there and, and who they are and, you know, how they can go after the opportunities that are available to them. So I work with them to get clarity on, on their identity and their blocks, most of them which are very mental, and then create a strategy on how they can start taking action towards the goal that they've set for themselves. And I just hold them accountable throughout that journey until they achieve, you know, the, the career that they want uh, in terms of making, you know, the kind of impact that they want, having the income that they want and doing the things that they love, which mostly is being involved in spending time with their young children and, and just doing all these things that they want to do, going on vacations and <laughs> having the time and, and financial freedom to do all of that. So yeah. in a nutshell, that is what I do. Yeah. And I also lead a, a nonprofit. Yeah, I'm the executive director of a nonprofit here in Edmonton that works in international development. We build schools in marginalized communities around the world. Right now, we have projects in Guatemala in a region called Nebar, which is very hard to reach. And so these are people that are very marginalized, but they, they have a strong desire for their children and their communities to succeed. So we go in there and we build schools with them, we collaborate with them. And um, once the schools are up and running, then they can start enrolling their children into school. And, you know, at least we try to have the children fin- finish elementary because there they isn't even a high school cur- curriculum there. So, so that's a huge challenge. And it's really fulfilling work that, that I love doing. And unfortunately, this year we had to cancel our trip to Guatemala. We should have gone there um, April 15th. But because of everything that's going on, we have postponed that. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so that's me. <laughs> yeah, so I love Guatemala. Yeah. I went there for a month. I had some friends that were working in a school down there. So I went down to help her on the project management side of things. And right. I fell in love with that country. Like, absolutely loved it. And, very beautiful um, people. Yeah. And so what's super interesting is that um, I think you're a mom too, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah, so I... <laughs> you are a business owner, you're a mom, and Crystal's also a mom, and yep. um, we're all business owners and moms, and now you have a nonprofit. I don't know when you have time to do that. Do you have like then a day job as well? 
Yes, the, the nonprofit is a day job. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Like, yeah. Oh the nonprofit. Is. I thought you had like another day job too, and I'm like, oh my goodness, how do you possibly manage that? So, what made you start um, the time management um, freebie that you have for women? What made you start that? It's because uh, it's, it's from my own personal experiences with, with time management. And so I'm an immigrant. I came to Canada seven years ago and it was a huge shift for me coming from Africa to Canada. We have a very different concept of time in Africa. Mm -hmm. Things are really slow moving. It's very lackadaisical. Like there's no rush. <laughs> I know. When I was Sounds good. And um, I was in Kenya and I used to wear like a watch all the time and I came back and I'm like gone with the watch. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like we just all need to chill a little bit more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So when I came here, it was a huge um, culture shock for me in terms of how much I had to do and the time that was available in a day to do all of that. So it was getting the kids ready for school, um, making breakfast, lunch and dinner, doing laundry, cleaning the house, applying for jobs, going for interviews. I'm like, how can one person possibly do all of this? And I did not have a lot of support uh, being a new immigrant at that time. And so how I just dealt with that was that I would just, you know, go on the sit on the floor and, and cry mm -hmm. and wonder how, you know, I would be able to do all of this because Back in Africa, we had a lot of help. Like you could hire a house help to come and help you with the kids, with, with the cooking and everything else. And then you could focus on, on building your career if you were career driven. Mm -hmm. But then coming here, I had to take care, take care of all of that. And so from that experience, you get to a point where you're like, I can't do this anymore. Nobody's coming to help me. <laughs> I am my own rescue. <laughs> so I need to figure out a plan on how I'm going to survive and thrive in this new environment that I'm in. So that is yeah. what actually sparked my personal development journey as well. Cause I realized I was lacking in a lot of things. I was driven, very focused, but then I just wasn't where I wanted to be. And one of those things was just, I just lacked, you know, the time management skills to be able to work effectively and get mm -hmm. the results that I wanted to. So yeah. it's from my own personal experience and wanting to share that experience with other women who are possibly not going through exactly the same thing, but struggling with time nevertheless. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Awesome. So before we get into some of the tips that you have, I want to ask Crystal, like, mm -hmm. what made you um, start your, what do you call it? Like a day timer scheduler, like my week? I don't know. It's what, my what week. Call? Yeah, just it, my There's week. a whole story associated with it. Um, you want to okay. you know tips? No, before we get into that, why did you start my week? Um, I was, I'm a huge stationary freak and I always have been. And I, I love planning my day ever since high school and getting my day planner, um, and, and having control over what it is that I do in a day. Hence being my own boss, I wanted flexibility and control. I want to be, do what I want to do in a day. So that's what I loved about it. Um, as a Franklin Covey lover, and I was using them for years, I ended up leaning more towards, um, the day at a glance. And, and then I was like, why buy one? I'm a designer. I can make one mm -hmm. and I can tw tailor it to what I need. I, I kind of grabbed elements from Franklin Covey as far as some structure, um, but then tweaked it. And then as I was flipping through every day and I made it at a full spread. So one page for notes, you don't have random pieces of paper everywhere on your desk and you could see your schedule and your to do's and was categorized by personal and work and this and that. And it was great for the day. And I think as a, entrepreneur, a mother at home, all of these different hats. Um, all I could see, it was like, it was like having blinders on. It was just the day. I didn't have a perspective for the week. I was constantly reacting. So I was actually um, in a call with a business, a creative business coach. And, and um, she kind of said, I want you to sit down and write down your top three projects you want to work on this week. And that cued into creating more of a visual for the week. And I found when I wanted to make one and most of you who's signed up there's the download and it kind of shows you it's a four page per week system and it gave me the space to download to look at my work week and to look at my weekend and I always got irritated that the weekend always got shafted with space 
Um, I love to plan for the weekend. Sometimes I'm working on the weekends. I needed to just as much space, but I wanted to have a lot of flexibility for writing notes and just getting perspective for the week without digging in too much. Yeah. <laughs> I could talk forever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I want to know three of your top tips for how you can stay sane and manage um, your business, your family, your nonprofit, um, <laughs> your sanity. Like, how can, what are three tips that each of you have? And if you have more, that's great, but. Um, Let's hear at least three um, from each of you. Who wants to start? I'll go. Um, it kind of, why is it, like, I think you had a question, actually, why do women struggle too much? Yeah. You're doing too much in too little time. So first tip for me is, I think because we're the ones who make our to-do list. I don't think we realize that. We're the ones putting the pressure on ourselves right. and it's our own high expectations of our importance, responsibilities, the archaic patriarchal view of what we should be, do, look. Um, so my biggest tip is really sit down and define what is your core value and role and what does matter. So, it, and it, it's a pretty standard across the role. Like what are your top three things? And that should be always be the first thing you kind of like, kind of look at, so. Love that. Awesome. Love awesome. That. That, that. <laughs> I actually had um, that on my list as well, but um, Great minds. I'll, go, I'll go, yeah, <laughs> I'll go on to the next one on my list, which is perfectionism. Mm. Um, we have the desire for everything to be perfect yeah. and we want to fit into that mold that society has defined for how women should should exist and what they should achieve and how they should achieve that. Like you should be a good mom, you should be a good uh, employee, you should be a good uh, business person, all of these things and the, all this pressure to be all things to everybody. And it's just not possible. You are one person and superwoman just doesn't exist. We have limits, so we should know when to um, where and when to place limits on ourselves so that we're doing the best that we can in the time that we have. So, so I believe that done is better than perfect. If it's good enough, if you've considered everything, just, just go with that and then you can tweak it as you go. But the more you want to be perfect, the less you're going to get done and the more time you're going to waste. And on that, I think it's changing your mindset, right? Like you focus on, we want to be the good woman. And yeah. this is really big right now. Why are we thinking like that? Yeah. You know, on the other end, people are successful. So what is it we can do to be successful? And what does success look like to us? So yeah, kind of like take that good person thing away and focus yeah, on what is success. That's really interesting because everybody has a different version of success, right? Yeah. And to some right. people, it is like they feel a sense of success working and managing and juggling so many different things just because then that helps them feel like they're successful and they're doing the right things, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things I've been learning is like, it's not always just doing, it's sometimes it's just being. Yeah, you know? yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I guess um, as well, if, if it works for you and you're not feeling burned out, and you're happy with the results that you have at the end of the day, regardless of what you're doing, yeah. how many things you're juggling, that's okay. But if you're feeling really overwhelmed and unable to function at the end of the day, then you really need to reassess and, and look at where you're wasting time, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, that and who you can how delegate to. Evaluating if you're wasting time or not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can evaluate your time wasters for sure. <laughs> and distractions. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know um, one of my friends, um, I had posted, you know, here's my schedule. I like to chunk my time into like 30 minute blocks. And she's like, well, that's great. You know, now add a four year old into the mix. And um, <laughs> cause like so many of us now are like juggling kids. Luckily my kids are teenagers. So like Gabby just came in and made herself lunch. So I don't have to make lunch for my yeah. kids anymore. Yeah. But a lot of people 
um, <laughs> with younger kids are having a really hard time with managing the work, the homeschooling, the whatnot. <laughs> I actually, on uh, Burnt Toast Studio is a local print house here in town, and I put a design in for a poster. Yeah. So this is my poster. Beware, nice. mom at work. <laughs> and there's a bunch of tear-offs. It's only good for certain ages, but sometimes it's about communicating with your family your priorities. It's a combination right. of that, also scheduling, like when are they sleeping? Yeah. When are they distracted? What's their schedule? And you do have to be flexible and work within it. But um, yeah, you, you can kind of get your, like I have a, I meant an open space, but it's like curtain. <laughs> so it's my door. Um, and my husband will open it up and he's like, I'm like, don't we have a sign for not do not disturb? And he's like, well, isn't that what the closed curtain's supposed to mean? And I'm like, then why are you opening it? Because I want to disturb you. <laughs> so it's letting go of this expectations and, and kind of relaxing a bit, but yeah, I try to work with it. I like that. Right, right. Yeah. I'm writing all these things down in the comments. Uh, <laughs> so Lindsay, what else would you say? What is another tip? Um, another tip that I have that has really worked for me is planning to plan because I did not have set time to just sit down and plan. Mm. And I realized that because I wasn't doing that, I wasn't prepared for the day. But when you take time to sit down and plan your goals and then, you know, the steps that you're going to take to achieve those goals and then, mm determining what it is that is super important like what is critical for you to achieve those goals what can you delegate what do you have to absolutely do yourself what can you delegate what can you um, put on the side burner for some other time then when you sit down to do that it really gives you clarity on what you should be focusing on and so that's a really good habit to have to just take some time to plan and planning is you know, plan for the day, plan for the week, plan for the month, have a, a quarterly plan as well, and have a yearly plan, even a five-year and 10-year plan that you can start working off of as you go. Mm -hmm. This is where it's like a great segue into what you do, Crystal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're saying, um, do you want to talk about your my week thing or should I? Yeah. And I'm almost done mine, is it four months or six months? It's um, technically good for six, what, six months, less two weeks, because you should be taking, or one week, you should be taking a week or two off. Yeah. Wow. So great. Time, undated. So it's there when you need it. I love it. And I use it all week because I do like the planning out per week. And it's like, I'll always preach, like only have three things on your list per day. You know, mm -hmm. so if one of those things is for your business, one of those is to keep your children alive. And one of those is to like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> keep your sanity and maybe you got to have a glass of wine at noon, you know, right. Just whatever, right. right? Schedule yeah. that in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Self-care is so super important. More about um, how <laughs> you can tell me, tell us all about your, my week now. Okay. I'm going to share my screen because yeah. I kind of have some stuff on screen here. Um, okay. So on my website, I sort of have it and the whole focus of it is find focus, live with intention, bring clarity and plan for wonder. Because that idea of the week, I want to actually look at the week and know, be intentional and not reactive of what's going on. Right. Um, I took a few photos of mine. So this was, you know, a while back. So this is what I was talking about that first page, the day, like a, a download page. So I have it in quadrants um, and I use circles and there's no real boxes per se, cause I'm creative and I love flow. Um, so you can, and it, you, it comes blank one, two, three. Um, like I think, no, my website's going to be really slow right now. So <laughs> anyway, so you can give your own categories for me. It's my business. I got to work on prospecting and here's a client project I have to work on. Um, then I have other, what are other things I have to get in the work? I have a personal so side. What do I have to do? And, the, and then I, I put this in there because I said, what do you, how do you want to feel at the end of every day? It's kind of like your own little mantra for the week. How do you want to feel? And then when you think about that, you'll make choices in the day that align with that vision. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. so that's sort of that download day, um, that I like. 
Okay. Yeah, and that goes well That's with great. the planning in advance. Okay, so yeah. now then, what do the other days look like? Okay, this so is then we get into, right. and this is where I made the four, it's four pages. So that first page is download, and I divide weekends and, and week. So I love the Monday to Friday, you get lots of space. And this is where, because you had the download with all of the lists, you don't have to put, like, this is a great place to put everything in, but then every day, you know, or the end of the one day kind of plan for the next day and sort of see what re realistically you can get done. Um, and I have the one, two, three, so you can put your priorities. Um, I also put in a sidebar for some overall project work, just so it's in the top of my head if I haven't actually put the specific task down. But what I also um, like there is what you'll be winning at. Like, right. you know, what are you doing that's killing it this week? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, a space for don't forget. Like sometimes there's a random, oh, don't forget to call the doctor this week. Yeah. Um, and then as you can see, I, have, I take little sticky notes and they're four by four and I cut them in half and I get, they're really great for extra notes. Um, and so you have the, the to-do list and I don't do more than, I think there's 10. Um, because realistically, if you were to really think about it, how many things can you, you know, get done in a day? Sometimes if you do more, it's fabulous, but what are the quality things you want to get done in a day? And the schedule, and this can be notes. I use it for a schedule. Um, but I like to, like on a Sunday night, I'll sit down or Monday morning, I'll look at my calendar online, my iCal, and I'll say, what meetings do I have? And I'll start to write them down. And then when I do that, I'll start to see all of these, this empty space. And to me, it's like playtime. It's like, what do I get to do in that focus time? So that's where I can block it off. Um, it gives me that kind of perspective. I have circles because I love circles um, to check things off. And yeah, so that's sort of how the inside spread works. Do you have yeah, any questions on it? I use my on it? part as like making notes. Like when yeah. I'm meeting with clients or something, I'll make notes in there. Or if I'm doing a webinar or something and leave notes, then I'll put my notes in there as well. Yeah, and yeah so it, it's flexible because it's not telling you what you need to do. Yeah. I'm not telling you you're working from nine to five because right. that's not my job. Mm -hmm. So um, how I've gotten away from using like a journal a notebook and then a yeah. timer, right? <laughs> so then when you get to the back side, it's like, okay, Saturday and Sunday have the exact same space as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, and then when you're in it and maybe you're in it on the weekend, maybe things are in your thoughts of your head. What do I have to get done this week? And you can just download it. And then that way on Monday, you're not so overwhelmed with things. You actually go into your desk knowing, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Great. Before you even open your email, right? So mm -hmm. you're in control of what it is that you do that week. Mm -hmm. I don't think I didn't. That was just another week. And then mine aren't big. <laughs> they're good for six months. I use high quality paper. Um, so there's durability. Um, this is a really great paper I use. It's Nina Classic Crest. It almost feels like plastic, but after six months, then it, it I, I store it and honestly I don't really refer to them they're worksheets for life for my life and at the end of it it, it sort of goes off the site but it's durable and it's easy enough to carry around it's um not quite letter half but a legal size letter half mm -hmm. so seven eight and a half by seven inches basically um, is the planner and then I include um, there's little tear-offs so you can easily find and get to the week that you're in which is really helpful and I've been playing around with this idea about things you can insert for that idea of, of long project planning. Um, they're not a part of it yet, but I thought I'd sort of show different ways you can kind of plan, like Ooh, you like said, that. quarterly. Yeah, um, I was like, I was cool. actually like, what's my year looking like? <laughs> Just so I had an idea on yeah. when am I taking yeah. breaks? I really um, when like holidays. from a marketing perspective, then you can like um, plan your, plan your lunches as well. Yeah. Yeah. Year. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, I'm going to just yeah, add that one in. I got to get <laughs> Okay. Um, stop share. So I think what uh, it, it's going to look flippy here, but I do include like six months as well. And I do right. the same structure of Monday to Sunday. So that way the weekends are together and it does give me, and I use like washi tape and stuff like that for, planning projects and stuff like that to give me myself that kind of perspective. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I also include in it is um, there's pockets on the front and back. And then I have about 30 pages at the back of just blank lined, yeah. some not lined sheets. Right. right. So you can have it for your meetings, extra notes and that kind of thing. 
Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Thank that you. That looks great, Crystal. Hey, Lindsay, tell us more yeah. about like, what you all do and how you best help women with their time management. Uh, well, really what I do is to just um, evaluate right now what's happening in their lives. Mm-hmm. Like where do they feel that they are shortchanging themselves and then identify those time wasters, identify, um, you know, the, the relationships that they have that could be draining their energy because energy is super, super important. Mm-hmm. And when you're tied to people that drain your energy and waste your time, you're going to get less done for sure because you're going to spend time trying to manage those relationships and trying to fix things that, you know, you may not be able to even fix. So that's one of the things that we do. Like, how do we set healthy boundaries with individuals that just drain our energy and waste our time? Yeah. I, I can see you want to say something, so yeah, I'll let you go. What are some other typical time wasters that you find? Um, I find that um, television is a huge time waster. <laughs> mm-hmm. It can be pretty addictive. It's meant to do that, actually, so that oh. we sit glued in front of the television and just binge watch movies or whatever it is. It's, it's interesting. It, it gets you hooked. So it's, it's one of those things. And then just one thing that I've, that constantly comes up is relationships that are toxic. Mm. Yes. Managers, it could be um, a spouse, it could be family, it could be friends and you feel guilty about letting all of that go because you've been with them for a really long time. Mm-hmm. But really, that is where the, the, most of the time is being wasted when it comes to, to women and what they want to achieve. So it's, it's baggage that they need to let go so that they're freeing up all this time that they need to be, um, that they're spending on trying to manage all these um, toxic relationships. Yeah, I don't And the other thing, too, is trying to, do, trying to do too much. Oh, yeah, doing too much. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, you, you have, if you have children, they have activities, you want some quality time with them. You, you have a spouse, you have a family that ask you to do things. So, um, in that guide that, that, um, I believe you're going to share, Chas, I, I do talk about that, that, um, don't offer (laughs) yourself a lot because then now you have all these obligations that you need to fulfill. So if somebody hasn't asked, don't, don't offer. And even if they ask, learn to say no. Like if you can't help, then have, you have the power to say, no, this does not work for me. And I think somebody said that those are the most powerful words that women should start using in their vocabulary and in their lives. That does not work for me. And that's so hard. Like, it is. It's, it's really so hard. hard. Uh, it's like us to want to help people, right? Like to be able to say no. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's kind of like you have to, it's the whole oxygen mask scenario, right? You got to make sure right. you have yours. And I've done a lot of reading and they say physically, mentally, we all have a good solid six hours of real productive work in of us. So if you have that in mind when you're kind of looking at your calendar for the day, when is your energy best? And hold that tight to your own needs, like use that for your time. And then when it comes, and then if you do like want to volunteer, like schedule that in and just know how much space you have for it. So if it's filled, I'm sorry, no, my schedule's full. Mm -hmm. There's no, no one's going to argue with that. And you've already shown that you do give back. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's really tough in the beginning for sure, because then um, those relationships are going to be shaken a little bit. But if you stand your ground with time, they will start respecting those new boundaries. And this is something that I've had to go through myself. So I know exactly how it feels. You feel guilty and you feel that you have played a part in creating this scenario that now you can no longer work with. And you're the same person that's going and saying, no, we have to do things differently from now on. So you have to be prepared to go through that phase. It's going to hurt a little bit, but it's super important that you go through that. But in the end, it will, you know, everybody will understand that now <laughs> these are the new boundaries and I cannot cross over them. Like Brene Brown says, yeah. boundaries, are, yeah. people with boundaries are the most compassionate people there are. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That is yeah. such a powerful thing. Like, um, yeah, people with boundaries are the most compassionate people. Mm-hmm. 
I got to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> because you have the, you, you have the energy because you've given yourself that space that you, yeah. when you can, you have it to give to somebody without taking on their needs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've looked after yours. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Um, there is something important that I just remembered. And I think it was, I think her name is Ianla Van Zandt. I think that's her last name. <laughs> but she said that if you allow people to steal from you, you are making them thieves. Like you are the one who is making them thieves. You should be able to set boundaries for people so that you can function in the way that you're supposed to function. You're training people so, how to treat you ultimately, right? right, right. Yeah. yeah. So don't make people in your life thieves. Don't create that space for them to be thieves, even though they don't want to, but because you're creating that environment for them. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow, ladies, this is like super powerful. I'm still just like back on this whole boundaries and are the most compassionate thing. So I just can't even think anymore. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you both have sent out some great tools and I hope everyone takes advantage or takes advantage of those tools. And um, yeah, and thank you so much. Does anybody have anything to add in? Well, I, just to kind of clarify, no, with the download, I said there was a coupon in there. I'll you include free shipping if you do purchase a planner. As well, we can do our own one-on-one -on -one Zoom, and I'm more than happy to kind of walk you through and give you some tips and ideas on how to kind of manage and schedule what's on your plate. Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. And Lindsay, awesome. tell us a quick about your freebie that you sent out. Okay, yeah, it's just, it's basically mindset and practical steps on how to start managing your time. And at the end of that, I have my details on there. I have a 30 minute free personal breakthrough session that I offer. So if the ladies are interested in that, they can schedule one with me um, at the bottom of that freebie. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Thank you so much, you beautiful ladies. And I thank hope you. you guys have a great day. And you thank too. you so much. Thank you so much. Nice to meet thank you, you, Lindsay. Thank you so much, Harris. Nice Bye. to meet you too, Crystal. Thank you.